In 1975, the Seattle Seahawks franchise brought NFL football to Seattle and the Pacific Northwest. The league wanted the Herman Sarkowski group. There was five of them. They were all but awarded it, and that's when, when they went to Lloyd uh, Nordstrom and got him, uh, his family, actually. When it came time to award the team, the league decided that they wanted Seattle. We really, at that point, had to, to risk huge amount of dollars as far as we were concerned. And I just said, that just makes no sense. We kind of like sports, but we were, at that point, we were really more interested in doing something for Seattle. We wanted to have something that was a real asset to Seattle. Herman Sarkowski, uh, John and Bruce, their whole family was uh, incredible. They came across as just normal folks. And, you know, at the time, I mean, Nordstrom was, they were like kings in this, in this town. They had been clamoring for football here for probably decades. And it took the Nordstroms and a, a group of minority owners to kind of put all of that together to get the Kingdome built. The Kingdome stands on a 35.9 acre site at the southern edge of Seattle's central business district. Its cathedral-like dome rises majestically above land once covered by the chill tide water of Puget Sound. The idea was that we were hopefully going to get a, a football team and a baseball team, and we were somehow going to have to house them in in a facility. So let's do it in a in a one in one facility, and because we're in Seattle, let's put a roof on it. Frankly. It, it got us the teams, so you can criticize the kingdom all you want, but it got the teams in Seattle, and it, it got us started, and, and so we, we, we were really grateful that we had the kingdom. When completed, the austere structure would rise 250 feet at its highest point. Now like a gigantic stone compass, it looks west to Puget Sound, the Olympic Mountains, and the Pacific Ocean, north to the city center, east to the colorful International District, and south to Tacoma and Mount Rainier. For the money and for what you have, uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous asset to, uh, to this entire area. And I know that uh, we're just delighted that uh, our new franchise will be able to start out in such a beautiful home. The owners and everybody was in uh, Hawaii for a league meeting. And one night while we were having dinner together at the Western Hotel, and one of the women suggested, now is the time we name our team. And so that everybody thought that was fun. So, well, by the time they got around the, the table, I thought we better not do this because we're going to have a war to end all wars. And so I suggested let's have a contest instead. There was five names. Seahawks were obviously one of them. Sockeyes was another name. Mariners was another name. Evergreens and Cascades. When we looked at it, we really liked the, the Seahawk thing by far the best. It was something you, you, could, you could see an actual attack bird. Uh, and it, it, it just felt right to us. And the first thing I read in the paper that the morning it was announced was there is no such thing as a Seahawk. I remember we had a, a, a luncheon where we, we, we kind of kicked off the whole team concept and it was, it was fairly large. It was in the hotel we had, uh, I think Howard Cosell and uh, you know, some real celebrities came out. In my mind, there's not much question but what the Kingdom will be sold out for most of the games, if not all of the games, the first season because of the strength of the National Football League and because of the great interest in sports in, in general and in football in particular in Seattle. And then the day after that we started selling season tickets. I think looking out in the audience I see the reason why we have football here and why we have a stadium here and why we will be an outstanding sports center in years to come and that's the people of this area who obviously are here at this luncheon and will be there in the stadium, will be there in the uh, stands watching the football opening. Uh, that's the secret of the Puget Sound area. The, the, the fan response was, was really kind of crazy. 
I had heard stories about how excited they were here, how quickly the season tickets were gobbled up. I mean, they had a waiting list like that. The city just embraced it. I mean, they just sold every season ticket before we had a team, before we had players. We had 40,000 in, in the first two days, and that was boggled our minds, of course. We, we thought it would take us at least a couple of years to fill the stadium with, <laughs> with season ticket holders, but no, they, bingo, it sold out immediately. Seattle Seahawks season ticket holders flock to the Queen City when the Seahawks are in town. Their convergent paths lead them all to the King Dome, one of America's finest new stadiums. When the Seahawks were in town, anyone with a lick of horse sense knew the King Dome was the place to be. I was told when I was hired that I could pick, pick the head coach and, and I told Herman at that time, I said, no, that's got to be an owner's, owner's job because uh, you're the ones that are putting the bills. John Thompson, he recommended that we hire uh, Jack Patera as our first coach, which turned out to be a, a really a good thing. I found out that the Seahawks had been awarded a franchise. I wrote a letter to John, never heard a word, never heard a word. Said, well, you know, it's just one of those things. And uh, Herman and John called me the night before and wanted to talk to me after the game about this job. I said, well, sure. Herman and I were allowed by Bud Grant to interview him before we left there, or I got up. Herman turned to me and says, John, I think we've got ourselves a coach. So when I went home, you know, my wife says, well, how'd it go? I says, I think I'm hired. <laughs> so it happened just that fast. The thing that impressed us so much about Jack compared to the others that, that we talked to was the complete honesty. I mean, he didn't, he, he left there thinking, well, he gave us this answer because it's one we should have, but he just told it like it is, and he was, he was so honest. That's why we wound up with him. The difficult task of giving direction to this new squad has gone to Jack Patera an uncomplicated man of few words and solid coaching credentials. We didn't have the expectation to win in those days. So it was pretty fun. Uh, there, was, there just wasn't the pressure. You know, one of the first thoughts was, yeah, it's gonna be tough early on because you won't win a lot of games, but you're building something. All we tried to do was to, was to make sure that the, that the that the staff and the players got what they needed and that we treated them like, like they were very, very important, not only to us, but to the, the whole region and city. We wanted the fans to like the team. We, we wanted them to like the guys on the team, and by gosh, it's worked out that way. I really do believe this, and always will, that it's much easier to start a franchise than to take over another one Everything we did was new. I'm just very proud of them.